Okay. Um, good evening, all, and welcome to the August meeting of Palomar Amateur Radio Club. Glad to see all of you that are here. Hopefully, got the um, message about the uh, change of venue. There's a, a issue going on at the Harding Community Center. And unfortunately, we were unable to meet there. Um, so we will get things started. Oh, let's see. Added the wrong thing. All right, we'll get things started with a pledge. If you will join me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Um, looked like there was a slight uh, error in the newsletter. The uh, date for the picnic got into the uh, subject, but not updated in the body of the picnic announcement. So apologies for that. It is indeed on September 16th. Hang on one second. Pendleton has decided to start testing ammunitions and my dog is not having any of it. So I had to close the door. Um, okay, so uh, yes, we will have a tea hunt out there going on. We'll have um, hot dogs and hamburgers uh, available. Um, so that is on September 16th at the San Diego County Park. Uh, there's more information about what to bring for sides and or desserts, depending on your last name, uh, in the scope, which is live on our website, palomararc.org, uh, or in your email. Uh, there's a lot of good information in the scope, some uh, good articles about uh, this technician class coming up. So if you have friends who want to get their license, check that out on August 26th in the Escondido area. Uh, Google San Diego ham classes on, on the internet to find that or check out the scope for the exact email address, San Diego ham classes at me.com, me.com. Oh, um, what else? A uh, nice article about, uh, from Michelle W5NYV about IEEE microwave week and an article about Poway field day with, uh, picture in there so oh uh, yeah good information in the scope make sure to check that out let's see um joe, joe yes i put this in the scope but just a reminder to everybody the program that we use does not allow me to use a pdf file uh yeah, for whatever reason so if you're sending me anything don't send it in pdf if you have to send it in some image format send it in jpeg or something like that uh or you know where you can send it in doc format or something like that but it's the, the program for whatever reason doesn't handle PDF documents, which is kind of a bummer. But um, so uh, it doesn't do me any good to get a PDF file. I can't use it. <laughs> yeah, uh, we can put text in. We can put images in, just not yeah. PDFs. Yeah, good, good note there. But uh, Keith is always looking for content mm -hmm. for the scope. And yeah. and so Keith, if, if Keith, if you do get anything in a PDF format, I can convert it for you. Oh, okay, I don't have a full version of Adobe here. I do at work, but I'm re but I'm I've got a week left, and then I'm retired, so I won't yeah. have the ability to do that at work after. Yeah, I've got it. I can do it for you. Okay, if it, most of the time Michelle sent her thing in PDF, and I just sent it back to her, and she, I sent her a message, and she converted it to Word and JPEG images for me. So, just okay. Um, all right, let's see, uh, Glenn, you want to talk about membership? Uh, well, I don't really have much to say. I am still um, behind on getting some notifications out and dealing with um, a couple of three cases of folks that set up uh, payment profiles in auto pay profiles in um, 
PayPal. And when it sets us up to go charge them for another year's dues, then it comes back um, a couple of times with can't, uh, can't get the, can't bill them. And the third time it suspends their account. So I'm behind on getting emails out, separating out those for that are falling through the cracks on, on that. I don't even have a count uh, right now of current members, sorry. Okay. Um, on that topic, we have, we do have, well, let me make sure I'm not lying. Uh, we do, I think we have the membership list working again on the website. Um, many thanks to Glenn and to Dave. Where'd you go, Dave? There, there you are, David, uh, KN6WNN, is it? Yeah. Um, so David is going to be taking over some of the webmaster duties and helping us with keeping the website up to date. So if you go to palomarearc.org, it'll look a little bit different than it did before it went down, but it should be functional now. And if you go to the membership tab, yep, you get a, a full list. The list as of July 3rd says 142 members, but that was a month ago. So, um, but you can check your uh, expiration date. I thought we were going to change that to lapse date or something. We, we didn't like to use the word expiration or expire. Yeah. Um, we're adults. We should get used to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can check that on there. And um, if you have any questions, of course, email membership at palomararc.org for more information. And we'll be happy to get you renewed or signed up. Uh, the join renew may or may not, that form may or may not work. If someone is wanting to join via PayPal um, and you use that form on the website, please let us know if it works or doesn't work. Um, okay, where, I don't know where I was. So uh, Mark, you wanna talk about tech except for modernization and we'll let Charlie do that right after you. Well, I guess the only thing except for modernization is, uh, oh, one thing Charlie doesn't know though, um, is that uh, the 147075 repeater went down and unfortunately we lost the capability to remotely reset it. So Glenn and I went up last Saturday and reset the repeater and it's fine. And also reinstalled the remote reset capability again. And one of the things that was interesting, we were going to swap out the entire repeater and the replacement, quote, hot spare repeater did not work correctly. It was receiving, but it wouldn't key the transmit side. So a thing that bothers me is my hot swap that I had always been able to depend on, I can no longer depend on. So I got to figure out what the issue is there and uh, why it's not functioning. Yet another thing to do. The one thing on modernization that Charlie isn't aware of is although we bought the i7 computer, uh, the big one for the HF SDR capability, uh, what he didn't know is that I got it up and running today, got the hardware hooked up, and I'm in the process of reloading the Linux operating system so that I can put the software defined radio stuff on it. So I'm about midway through that today. And I assume you want to turn it over to Charlie now. Sure. Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, 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 it's not at all. Okay. No, not really. <laughs> um, um, the modernization project is on track. We're getting ready to move the flex up to the mountain after we do a little more testing of the control mechanism, although it is presently down here at um, John Weaver's house. And it is fully operational. 
and some alarms in the main intestine are using it for contact, FCA, sideband, VX, often R8, vertical, and uh, we're very happy with that. So um, the ship is proceeding on force. Any questions? That's it. I have one or two little things to add, if it's okay, Charlie. Can anybody hear me? Yep, go ahead. All right. Um, John got the second. Um, the way we're going to do this is there are two smart routers. One is on the mountain and one is at John's. The smart routers control all of the VPN and access to all these systems. So during the last week, John got the second smart router up and running. And it's basically a duplicate of the one on the mountain. And it will learn everything associated. And John, if you want to take this over, you're welcome to. But it will learn everything associated with not only the SDRs, but the flex. And the flex is a little more complex because it doesn't handle antenna rotation by on its own. So there's another computer that goes with the flex that handles antenna rotation and possibly logging or something like that. But right now, at least antenna rotation. Someone here, namely yours truly, forgot to order the computer interface for the rotator. So that's currently on its way on a slow boat from China. It's probably made it around Taiwan so far. And I'm hoping that it'll hit Hawaii in a couple of days. Yeah. Bruno's. Bruno's. <laughs> anyway, assuming it all makes it here in one piece, it's supposed to be mid-month. And then the plan is to give John the um, controller for the rotator, the um, complete rotator assembly, and a piece of PVC pipe that I've got left over from when uh, I had a plumbing problem uh, that's the same diameter as the mast, roughly, and an elbow on it so he can show which way the rotator is pointing. And we will have all that stuff running down here before it goes up the mountain. Did I forget anything, Bruno or John? Nope. That's... Uh... That's the short answer. If anybody wants the long answer, uh, you can contact me offline. Mark? Oh, yes, Mark? Charlie. I yes, think sir. that's enough engineering design for a general meaning. Right now, we will move on. Well, I get the opportunity to report. One other thing. Um, for those of you who are interested in responding, John has created a paper on how to handle um, billing and uh, or assignment of the flex to different people. I've read it. If anyone here wants to participate, contact John or me. And, and you're welcome to give your opinion as to how to handle the ability to access the flex. Now I'm in. I'm yes. In. Yes. Anyone who wishes to do that, you will be in the beta testing room. Do not, please. Do not access the flex unless you contact Bruno and get his permission to engage in the beta test. That software is under development and may not be available when you try. Any questions? 
Now, Charlie, Charlie, I'm I'm sorry. The document that I was referring to is not the instructions for operating the flex. It's a paper that came out today a little after noon on how to be able to access the VPN system to down select to a single person. It has no access to the flex itself. Let me be a little more precise on what you start talking about, please. Yep, sorry about that. Okay. All right, well, of course, Dave uh, said in chat he's interested, so i uh, get that over to him. Uh, and by the way, Dave, uh, welcome to the board. I'm gonna get you on the board uh, mailing list here in a few minutes. Um, don't worry, we don't, we don't, it doesn't take a lot of, it doesn't uh, produce a lot of emails. Um, okay, are there any other, got it. Uh, are there any other, uh, oh, and John too. Um, any other announcements, questions, comments? Did I miss, oh, I guess uh, I didn't ask if there's any first time visitors. I think I recognize everybody. So, well, Scott, you, yeah, go ahead. Introduce yourself to the rest of us and uh, where you're from. Hi, Scott, KC7CJ, Poway. Hot, right. sticky Poway. <laughs> there's several, nice you, several of your neighbors are waving at you. <laughs> Any other first time visitors? Uh, and if I could ask a favor, um, make sure you've got at least your first name and call sign as your uh, in your name so that we can take attendance based on the uh, a screenshot that I'll take in a little bit. Uh, any new upgrades? No. Okay. Um, back to the agenda here. Da -da 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 -da. No goody table. Um, all right, well, I guess I will uh, introduce your board. Uh, as mentioned earlier, Dave, KN6WNN, welcome to the board as webmaster. Mark, who you heard from, KF6WTN is your repeater site chair. Uh, Charlie, NN3V is the modernization chair. It's not a voting position, but he's still considered to be a valuable member of the team. Uh, your scope editor, Keith, KM6, CSW, sorry, CXW. John, W6XM is around here somewhere. There you are. And uh, uh, is one of your directors. Ron, AJ6FQ is your other director. Um, Glenn, your membership chair, AI6RR, who you heard from a few minutes ago. Uh, one of the gyms, K2VO, is your treasurer. The other gym, W6TQS is your secretary. Uh, Chris, KD9LF is your vice president. And I see Chris is back. Did I see that right? Yeah, there you are. Hey, Chris, welcome. Did you turn anybody away? You're muted. I saw David and I went up to the, uh, the there was a sign on the door that said our meeting was canceled. So I took a pen and said the in-person meeting was canceled. See us on Zoom. And um, as I rolled by, they had opened the door, so nobody saw the sign. <laughs> <I don't> oh. <laughs> See how it goes. Okay. All right. And I am your president, Joe K6JPE. Uh, without further ado, uh, well, Chris, since you're back, do you want to intro the, the topic? Hand it over to the other Chris. Sure, I'd love to. Uh, I, this is a topic I want to hear about, summits on the air. Uh, Chris N1CLC has uh, hiked many, many peaks. Is I activated 506 summits on and uh, earned thousands of points. Um, he's obviously very active in several areas and uh, has uh, lots of tips on how to set one up, how to be an activator, and uh, the equipment that he uses. So I can't wait to hear from him. All right, N1CLC. It is over to you. I will spotlight you and you're off to the races.
You are still muted, though. There you are. Can I get a signal report on the audio now? <laughs> Five nine. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, and do you see I'm doing a screen share right now? Yes, we see it. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm really excited to, um, whoops, let me get this out of the way. It's going to make it harder. Sorry about that. All right, to our presentation. So first of all, in the chat, let's see if I, I didn't press the button in the chat. Um, the presentation is available online at hamninja.com forward slash presentation. Um, also, if you go to just to hamninja.com, you'll see the very first article here um, presenting to Park, and there's a link right here. It's for the folks that want to follow along at home. Um, obviously, these slides are available uh, in perpetuity. So I'm really excited to talk about this. One of my favorite things to do with ham radio. Let's uh, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. So the core of the agenda is I'm going to answer a few questions about who I am. What the heck is this soda thing? Why do it? Um, let's do this thing. So let's uh, talk about how to do it. Research and prep, equipment, hiking, Q&A, and uh, some other fun stuff. So I'll dive right into it. If you do have a question, feel free to um, you know, pop your hand up at any time, or uh, I don't think, I can't see the hand thing, but to just prompt me and I'm happy to take questions. So just a, a little bit about me, I'm not gonna drain this whole slide, um, but I became a ham in 2017. I actually presented uh, to this group, I think in 2019, I'm not sure, Glenn might remember. Um, I activated my first summit that year and worked Japan on five watts sideband. So for me as a brand new ham, really working DX on my very first soda outing, which I was pretty darn clueless about it um, because I didn't watch one of these presentations. I just saw some stuff on YouTube. It's like, oh, okay, that looks like fun because my home station really sucks. Um, so um, I rediscovered my desire to hike and combined it with uh, this whole radio activity and having a lot of fun with it. So as you can see, I've done a lot of summits, um, got a, received a lot of points. I've got a lot of exercise, so it's 1,780 miles plus so far, uh, 438,000 plus feet of uh, elevation climb uh, since, and I've made a ton of simplex contacts, uh, 11,000 actually, uh, doing soda summits on the air, um, and received many, many DX contacts that way. Um, again, hamninja.com, which already flashed up on the screen, and has a lot more information. For example, um, we're going to talk about the loadout, and this is an example of that. So I'll be giving you URLs along the way that say hamninja.com slash something, and it's a shortcut to get you right to more detailed information about whatever it is I'm covering. Okay, so what the heck is this soda thing? Uh, Summits on the Air is an award scheme for radio amateurs and shortwave listeners, blah, blah, blah. Really, it's kind of like geocaching for geeks. So you go to the top of a mountain, you set your station up, you get four contacts. If you log them in the SOTA system, you get your points. You don't have to log them. Um, you don't have to climb a mountain, however. You can be a chaser and do that from a mountaintop, um, so summit to summit, or you can do it from home or a park or wherever you happen to be in your car, for instance. And we'll talk more about that as well. So... Um, a lot of people say, you know, want to know what makes a soda summit, you know, this one's not a soda summit, but this one is. So the bottom line is it has to have at least 500 feet of prominence, 492 feet to, to be exact. And this little diagram on the right hand side kind of explains this whole idea of prominence. Basically means that it sticks up 500 feet above anything else around it. If you're drawing circles like you would on a topo map that last circle that goes around the mountain should be at least 500 feet from the top. So this helps explain why that really high summit you think should be a soda summit is not. That's because there's a coal right here. Um, and therefore there's only you know a couple hundred feet in here. Um, there is an activation zone, that, that vertical zone, which is 82 feet from the summit. So you don't have to get to the peak uh, to be in the activation zone to get your points. 
I've been to summits where getting to the very, very top is a little bit too dangerous and beyond my ability. So, you know, I stopped, set up my station and had a great time. Um, certainly you must have legal access to the summit and your activity must not disturb other people, which is a great thing about using headphones and CW. Nobody even knows what the heck you're doing. <laughs> so we'll talk about that too. So why do so? Okay, as an activator, um, it's low RF and my antenna thinks it's a thousand feet up in the air. So at home, my noise floor is around five. On a soda summit, sometimes it's below one. It's totally awesome. Uh, the joy of getting outside for some fresh air when it's not hot, been boiling hot down here at Lake D. Um, there's a sense of accomplishment, certainly on some of the summits uh, for me. It's perfect for uh, practicing MCOMs because you're basically setting up your a portable station and tearing down all the time. Um, I really enjoy chasing from a summit. Uh, I have a lot of friends that do this and uh, made a lot of friends doing it. And they're all over the place up in Washington, Oregon, Colorado, et cetera. So some really great views. Uh, I also take take some time to kick back, maybe meditate, eat my lunch. It's it's really a lot of fun. Um, as I'd mentioned earlier, you don't have to be an activator. You can be a chaser. That's a person that's trying to get points by uh, contacting other soda, um, the other guys up on mountaintops. You can do that from anywhere, as I'd mentioned. Um, you can live. It's it's a lot of fun because you can live vicariously through other people's adventures. Um, it can be a real challenge sometimes. Uh, it's also easy to get contacts if you're trying out your station or you're practicing uh, Morse code or CW, as we call it. And I'll talk more about that as well. Uh, the exchange is quick and easy, so it gives you a chance to try your station. And there, of course, I mentioned there's that challenge of pulling out a QRP station. So um, one of the things kind of like geocaching in the old days is it pulls me into mountaintops that I would have never thought to go to. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Some of them I won't go back to, but um, yeah, it's really it's really a neat hobby to, to do either by yourself or with friends. I certainly enjoy doing it with friends. Is, the, is this soda thing growing? Well, yes, it is. Now I got these stats about six months ago, but um, this shows the growth in activations over time through 2022. Um, and then this active soda activators per year. So these are active means they're they're activating at least one summit during that year. So they're active doing something. So as you can see, it's been growing and it's uh, uh, and as a result, CW is also growing, which is kind of an interesting piece. So let's get in and talk about the recipe of an activator. Um, I don't have it in the build mode. It's just going to dump everything into you at once, but I'll, I'll take you through it a little bit. So you basically find a peak. Um, there are several apps that you can do that with. Uh, you can bring up a map on this tool using Sotless. Let me just put this by my house here. I'm really, oh, I was doing a little research because I'm going to go up to the Grand Tetons on October. So as you can see, there's a summit right by me. It's been activated 110 times. That's kind of my test area. So I've done a bunch of those. Um, the, the next step is to get your butt up there with your gear. So you can drive, you can walk, you can hike, uh, you can free solo uh, like Alex Hanold. Um, you set up your station. The only, the only requirement really is your vehicle can't be part of the station. For example, um, you can't hook into your car's antenna or battery, those sorts of things. You can set up, as you can see, it doesn't have to be HF. Uh, you can do VHF and you can do lots of different modes. Sideband, FM, CW, uh, FT8. I wanna make sure I threw that in there for Phil um, Carnes because I know he's gonna be a hard time about it. Um, you could run any power. So I've been up there with hundred Watts, um, but I've recently been running QRP uh, with some really cool radios and I'll show you those in a minute. Certainly, that's it's it's a lot of fun with CW doing that. You find an open frequency, or you just answer CQs, which is what I was doing day one because I didn't know what I was doing. So um, you spot yourself and let other others know that you're there. Spotting yourself is uh, basically puts you up on websites like this one, and as you can see, 
There is a VK station up on Mount Bendo, Bonfall Hill, et cetera. So if you have a good station, you can probably get a hold of these guys. Um, once people know you're there, then you get a pileup, basically. You get your four contacts. You try some different bands. It's fun to try different bands, see what the band conditions are like. Um, and then you break it all down and you head down. Um, statistically, it's the most uh, probable time that you're going to have a wreck. <laughs> that's that's when accidents happen, except for my my big one when I uh, I put a, a branch through my leg that was uh, impaled myself up on a mountaintop setting up my gear. So uh, anyway, log your contacts on sodadata.org. Um, and then you, you can actually do a direct upload from your iPhone if you're doing, you know, logging on your phone, et cetera. Uh, and then the usual, you know, no trespassing, don't leave any trace, use your ninja skills, and most of all, have fun. I put together a four-piece video series on how to do this hobby, the step-by-step, -step, which includes a lot of the planning, using maps and those sorts of things, and how, how do you find these summits, and how do you find how to get there, et cetera, uh, and then how to do the actual activation, et cetera. Um, it also talks about um, casing, which we're going to cover in just a minute. So you've already seen the Sotlas, uh, where it shows you the various summits around you. Um, you can pick one and figure out how to get there. Then you um, you can also use another tool called Soda Maps, or just a couple of different tools that you can use. Um, you navigate. I use uh, a couple of different tools, but right now Gaia GPS to plot a course and how I'm going to get there, et cetera, et cetera, and do a little bit of research, how much climbing is going to be involved, et cetera, what the terrain looks like, pick a route, is there a trail, et cetera. Um, I'll set up my gear. So on the far left-hand side, you'll see this. This is probably one of my first HF setups. It was super wonky, um, but it worked. It was a, basically a 20-meter dipole, and uh, it worked really well. I use a vertical for uh, a year or two as well. It's a chameleon MPAS. This thing worked great. Um, I you, and I could drive 100 watts into it, and I worked um, at the bottom of the solar cycle. I was working VK land and uh, Europe on that thing. And then there, of course, there's VHF on the right, far right hand side. I taped this uh, Yagi to my hiking pole. <laughs> it's it's a uh, Pretty sketch there, but it worked well. That was a lot of fun. So um, you activate so you can use your, you can run sideband, QRO, et cetera. Um, you can see me on different mountaintops here. This was um, somewhere in up in the Lagunas. Um, the one in the middle is on a hill in RB, Rancho Bernardo. And this one is in New Mexico on the far right-hand side where I'm working CW. Um, and I think this is one where like there was a lightning bolt that came right over me and I was packing up pretty quick that day. All right. So if you're a real soda boss and you actually use two radios at the same time, the radio that Adam uh, Kimmerly here is holding K6ARK in his left hand right here is a mountain topper, which I have one of those. But you can see how small this thing is in his hand. And you talk about this is one of the reasons why guys do CW, guys and gals, is because it's so doggone light. So five watts, and you can work uh, Spain, no problem with this radio, Spain and France, et cetera. Um, so that thing works really well. It's super lightweight, doesn't need a big battery. And he's running an antenna similar to mine, which is an NFED half wave, probably. Um, one of the K6ARK kits. Um, he's holding the mic there because... I'm bugging him. I'm on the other side of the mountain wondering, you know, what he's doing over there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we had a lot of fun doing this together. Um, so let's and that jump into the recipe of a chaser, which is how does a chaser do this? So you fire up your rig, um, you monitor Soda Watch, which is Soda Watch or Sotless over here. Um, and then you chase. So you tune in. Um, Listen, the activator pretty much runs the show. Um, uh, wait for wait for your chance, make a call if you get your if you get your call sign comes back from the activator, you're in. And really the only thing you have to do is exchange signal reports, and that constitutes a contact. 
it's not a contest. Um, it's just having a lot of fun. So you log your, your summit for points in sodadata.org. Um, you can export right from stuff like uh, AC log and shove it right up into um, Soda data. And then you go and look for your next contact. So you make a bunch of contacts and then you upload them. Um, as I mentioned here, a lot of activators use uh, CW. It allows them to reduce weight. Um, and it turns out it's a lot of fun. It's really hard for me to learn. Um, but once you get fairly decent at it, it's pretty cool. And we'll talk more about you know, why you might want to use, uh, use this to learn CW. Um, this is running through our steps. I'm not going to drain these slides to you, but this is another way of finding an activator. There's a couple of different websites. Um, you find them, you tune in, attempt to make a contact. Uh, you can see my station on the left. This is my station up at my summer home in the mountains of Arizona with Glenn has been there. And my station on the right is here in San Diego. Um, used to do, I used to work for Qualcomm and work from home and I got a bunch of screens there. Okay, uh, this is a mention of other chasing tools. Um, this is a really cool one. This is really for anybody. Um, Ham Alert, if you guys aren't aware of it, look into this. It's really cool because when your friends are up on a soda summit or a park, if you enjoy doing parks on the air, which is another outdoor activity, um, you know, I get a little alert on my on my watch and, and I keep track of my friends. And if I'm at home, then I try to chase these guys. My station is the best, so I can I can uh, uh, still contact some of them, Colorado and Washington, Arizona, get a bunch of guys in Arizona and California sometimes. Um, this talked about uploading to get your points. Um, and then everybody's favorite topic is equipment loadout. I'll... So I'll just run through this pretty quick and then I'll show you, I'll do a little bit of show and tell here. So my, I have a bunch of different gear, but my favorite stuff is on here, which is an Elecraft, Elecraft KX2. It is the wonder radio of radios. It is the ultimate for soda, I think. Um, I've got a bunch of different little uh, push-up holes. Um, I'm actually not using the soda beams. I have one that's a, a Chinese fishing pole, uh, crappie pole. And it's super lightweight. Um, I've got a bunch of different antennas. Um, basically, I use ones that I built myself from a K6 ARK kit. Um, there, I have a I have a J pole for my HT. Um, I have some. <laughs> I think I have all of the Bioeno batteries that could be portable. I probably own them. I have all the different sizes. So it depends on which radio I'm taking with me. I generally take a little one, even for the KX2, because you get a little bit more punch. Um, and if I forget to um, charge a battery, those things, like even my little six amp hour battery, I can do like, I don't know, six, seven activations before I have to really recharge it. So that's really handy. Um, I log all my contacts on my phone using this logging app. Um, I also carry a Garmin inReach uh, for satellite communications uh, in case um, there's an emergency, or I can also use it to contact my friends. But more importantly, I can use it to spot myself when I don't have cell communications. And if you do a bunch of hiking in, in uh, the mountains, you're going to get into a lot of areas that just don't have cell service, um, especially if you run AT&T. I put all this stuff into a Zulu 30-liter backpack. Um, Carbon fiber hiking poles. Uh, you see my my HT there. I have a bunch of different HTs. Everybody does. Um, I run with a whole bunch of different uh, paddles. My favorite right now really is my Bagali. Um, that uh, they're just a dream, and I'll I'll show you those in a second. So extra clothing, uh, food, ten essentials. Uh, I got an iPhone app that's really handy. All Trails or Gaia mapping application for your phone, um, and uh, as a bonus, if you go to hamninja.com slash loadout, there's a lot more detail information about this. Oh, yeah. And don't forget your med kit. So just a quick view of this stuff. Let's see if this works. Okay, good. This is my uh, favorite. It's it's a Bagali adventure, I believe. And it's almost like capacitive touch, touch paddles. They're super, super sensitive. And I strap it to my leg. You, and they're you haven't just... changed the slide. Oh, well, actually, I'm 
Oh, oh, you're showing it on the screen. Okay, sorry yeah, about I'm that. Yeah, I'm showing it in my video. Sorry about that. Um, but these are really, really cool. Uh, some of my favorite. This is a QRP Labs um, QCX Mini. As you can see in my hand, it's super lightweight. I built this. This was super easy to build and actually a lot of fun to build as well. Um, this is one of my antennas. This is the one for, uh oh, yeah, this is the one for my mountain topper. Maybe if you uh, right stop here. the presentation while you're show and telling, that way you're. Oh, camera. good idea. Yeah. Who doesn't want to show and tell? Uh, there we go. Is that better or worse? Stop the share. Crikey. Hang on. Not sure. There we go. All there right. There we go. Yeah, it's much better. <laughs> been a while since i've used zoom all right so this is super small it's a mountain topper um this is an outstanding radio three bands this is a custom antenna for it it's an n fed half wave it does 2040 um and i think this is a 17 meter does 17 meter as well but with this radio out i do 2040 this tunes up on 20 and 40 no problem um this is my qrp labs radio um and it's little custom antenna so i have these little kits in their own little bags and um they're super lightweight you can just throw it in a little day pack and be on your way um i have over the years collected a whole bunch of different paddles um i've got that one of course the bagali um i got some pictures of some other ones but these are these are super super paddles um so anyway that's some of the gear i've got a couple of AR, amr two or three amr paddles as well um and then for you straight key folks out there i picked up one of these i haven't done straight key yet but i promise i'm going to do it soon so that should be that should be a real adventure <laughs> so all right i'll jump back to um share my screen here come on all right and can you see my cursor flipping around on the screen? I got the right one. Yes. Yep. Okay. I've got multiple screens here, so it drives me a little crazy. So this is just another picture of some of those paddles. The one in the lower left-hand corner is actually my very first paddle made for me um, by uh, k 6 rk It's my favorite one. It's a little wine cork there. It's very appropriate for me, if you know me. Um, so do, you mount, do you mount that in a wine bottle while you're working? Actually, that's a good idea, but the wine bottle weighs too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so soda, I wanted to say something about soda and CW for any of the members that have not tried CW. Don't do it unless you really want to, but it, it's a heck of a lot of fun, especially if you do soda. So I learned it because I wanted to chase other operators, and a lot of the soda guys were doing CW. I didn't initially understand why. The big thing was wait you know it's you can run five watts which is equivalent to 80 watts sideband um signal to noise ratio wise um it turns out that uh, you also are guaranteed to activate i've never had a problem activating with getting four contacts that is um on cw sometimes it can be a struggle like on a sunday afternoon especially after a contest it's it's a real struggle to get your four contacts um, on 10 watts. With CW, it's not a problem. Um, and, and as you can see, I dropped nine pounds from my pack. Now, if I could do the same thing for my gut, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, so I have an entire article that I wrote about my journey of doing CW. But one of the things that if you're learning that I want to just kind of plug and how it matches with C uh, soda as well, if you're learning Chase, Chase guys that are doing CW because all you need to do is know how to send your call sign, wait for it to come back. If it does, the operator will typically uh, send your call sign and your signal report. Um, they may say uh, they may say a, a bunch of other stuff. All you have to do is listen for a signal report, um, and then they'll turn it over to you with a break. All you need to do is send um, TU5NN and then a break. That's all you need to do. Even if they're not 599, which NN stands for, um, that gets you 
started in CW and it helped kind of breaks that scare factor down. And it's a really good way to kind of get started in CW, um, just really super low risk. So just, just a plug for that on, on doing that if you're interested. Um, I went through some of the, there's all kinds of lightweight options. So if you get into soda, you what you actually also get into another sector of ham radio, which is ultralight gear sometimes, because nobody wants to pack a you know 100 watt radio to the top of the mountain all the time unless you're like me and kind of nuts. Um, so here's a bunch of them here. Um, here are some custom ones from K6ARK, who is a complete freak. Um, the one that's not on here is the choking hazard because it's about the size of your th thumbnail. He made like, I don't know, nine contacts that day on this thing that literally is the size of a postage stamp. It's super cool. Um, there's a little wire on it and you just kind of ground it out and it sends, it's basically a straight key. Um, I think I was his second contact on that thing. Uh, Ted, who was with me, was his first contact. So you can see there's a lot of ways to go ultralight. Um, here's, here's a portable station with the QCX mini and battery. It's only 14 ounces. Um, you could actually run with a nine volt battery. It'd still work. So you can do a lot of cool stuff. Um, so that's that's as far as we'll go with the with the equipment porn today. Um, oh, there's one other thing here. You may not be able to see it, but the paddles on here are little custom paddles. I didn't show that earlier um, from N6 Air Ray. They're super, super tiny. Uh, they're basically on a, they're about the size of the jack that plugs in and they're on a, um, little PCB board. I'll show those to you at the end here. Just a couple of things here. Um, hiking can be hazardous. So back backcountry uh, hiking, checking the weather and um, having a plan and letting people know what you're doing is really important. Um, also having a few extra layers is a really good idea. Um, unfortunately, the bikini hiker uh, froze to death on a mountain. Uh, go figure. So always prepare, tell us where you're going, stay within your personal abilities um, are the top ones. Um, I have an entire article on that at hamninja.com slash safety, which is a pretty much a, a lot more detail on it. So one of the questions I got, and it certainly came up the last time I presented to Park, was, hey, why are you sure you really should go on your own? And it's all about mitigating risk and how much risk do you want to take? So should you go across the street to the park and walk by yourself at 5 p.m.? Uh, should you Maybe you should bring a doctor with you, um, bring some friends. I mean, who, who knows what's going to happen? So if if I had to wait for people to go with me, I be wouldn't have nearly as many summits under my belt. Um, but these are the ways that you can start to mitigate the risk with, with the hiker's 10 essentials. So navigation some illumination, some protection, uh, first aid, uh, including foot care, um, a knife or moldy tool, fire, which I, I I don't know why we even recommend this anymore because it's just, don't, don't light a fire. <laughs> I, unless you're like about to freeze to death, don't do it. Uh, certainly a shelter, a little bivy is nice. Um, extra food, extra water. Um, extra clothes. So I always have at least one additional layer in my backpack. I generally have a fleece and a shell. Between those two things, um, I'm pretty doggone warm in addition to what I'm wearing. A lot of times I come up on a summit, it's a lot colder. Um, I can just throw on a fleece. I can throw on the shell if it's windy. Um, as far as the uh, medical kit here, this, this can be, you know, when you're when you're out hiking and you get in trouble, and you've got a spot device or um, the in-reach device like I have, and you call for help, um, or you use your radio, because we are ham operators after all, um, it is going to take time for search and rescue to get to you, even if they know exactly where you are. They're, they're volunteers. Uh, if you talk to Adam, he's, he may be at work. Um, they have to marshal their resources to a staging area. They have to figure out how to get there safely themselves. Um, it's you may be up there for 24 hours. So I always people ask me, well, why do you have all this crap in your pack? And it's really about sort of being able to survive uh, at least 24 hours by myself. I'm not going to be super comfortable. I'm not bringing a, a sleeping bag and other stuff. 
but I won't freeze to death and um, I'll have plenty of water. Um, I carry extra water just because I come across people all the time that are really in trouble. Um, so I did have to save myself because uh, you have to depend on your own skills, maybe get a little bit of training. I'm an ex-army medic um, and EMT. So when I did put a tree limb branch through the back of my leg, um, I had something to stop the bleeding, uh, push some of the stuff that wasn't supposed to be sticking out of my leg back in, um, wrapped it up, and then I had a plan B and a plan C in case the bleeding, you know, didn't subside. So um, just good to be prepared, and that's just all I'm going to say about that right now. You can go to hamninja.com slash safety to learn more. Um, so these are some links uh, that you can get off the presentation uh, around, you know, more information. Certainly this presentation is on. Soda360 is another resource. And let me see what other links. Um, the Soda How-To series. And this is just kind of what's covered in there. And there's also a video in there for you chasers. So I'd love to get some chasers out of this group. Um, if you're sitting around the radio and you're not you know, you want to test your radio out, uh, want to do a little hamming, bring up Soda Watch and see if you can contact some Soda, uh, soda guys. You don't have to um, upload your contacts, by the way. You don't have to do anything it just except call us up. It helps us get our contacts, and it's a lot of fun. Let's see. Okay. Um, is there, you know, I'm just looking through my slides here to see if there's anything else in the backup that I might want. There's a bunch of backup slides for the group here. Um, this is an example, by the way, why I go out and hike. So I came across this mom and her two babies that were practically still wet. So really, really a lot of cool when you see stuff like that. Um, this talks about hamninja.com, uh, soda award levels, which I won't drag you through all this stuff. This is kind of the point scheme and how it works in California. It's a little bit different in Arizona and New Mexico. Um, there's a reason for that. If you want more info, I can explain that. Um, there's a whole bunch of reference sites on the slides as well. Um, I have some tips about learning CW, but of course, it, this wouldn't be complete if I didn't have a complete article about how I went about doing it. And it's at hamninja.com slash CW. And I have an article with additional reference links to getting started in CW or improving your CW if you already know it. Um, there's a little bit of lingo in here, and that's it. So that's really it. I've been doing all the talking. Any any questions out there? Well, I'll tell you, uh, this is Glenn. Um, I remember the afternoon that Chris sent me a text that said, oh, my God, you're not going to believe it. I got Japan on five watts. <laughs> and his uh, excitement over this was was definitely there and uh, came through. And it's yeah. uh, quite impressive the out, the, that you get out and do all that walking. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It gets I've you lose a bit of weight doing it too. So, but I'm not doing a whole lot of hiking right now because it's just too doggone hot. So I'm, I'm waiting to get back over to Arizona once my kitchen remodel is done. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, this is Ron K2RP. A uh, couple comments. If you wanted to uh, learn CW, there's an organization called the Long Island CW Club, L-O-N-G-I-S-L-A-N-D, CW Club that sponsors people learning CW. They got thousands of members and websites and all kinds of things that will teach you CW in an organized manner. Uh, I've done a couple of presentations for them uh, via Zoom over the years, and they're really a very enthusiastic group. So Long Island CW Club for anybody who's interested. And the other thing is I know that you're talking about going alone. People go to two or three. I'm sorry. Do people do people do this in groups of two or three? Oh, absolutely. And it's a heck of a lot of fun to go with a friend. Uh, not only do you have somebody to pass the time with, 
And um, if it's a really hard hike, they can share the misery as well. Uh, that's always important. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fun to go out with a buddy, um, two or three guys um, I've gone out. There is a camp out coming up. That's a really good thing to go to. If you go to, um, shoot, I'm going to, I'll, I'll come up with a URL and put it in here, but I think it's uh, SoCalSoda.com should talk about the camp out and there'll be a whole bunch of soda operators up by Big Bear. Um, we're going to camp out for a couple of nights and we all go out together to, there's a whole bunch of summits around there. So we split up, people go to different summits, you get summit to summit points and uh, it's a heck of a lot of fun and you can make multiple summits in one day too. And then of course, when you when you get back to camp in the afternoon and start cooking, you can you know tell lies about how great your how great your soda skills are, and uh, certainly how great your CW skills are. I lie about that all the time. <laughs> One of the things that I would mention because of this club, I think the average age of this club is deceased, and it would be a lot safer if people went together. Yeah, yeah, and and you don't have to hike. Um, there are some summits you can drive up to. Um, Otai Mountain is one of them. Um, but yeah, there's several around the county and, and you know, in Arizona, there's, I've done several myself. And those are still a lot of fun. You get to see some beautiful country. So anybody else? I don't well, I want to take a look at the uh, chat. Ah, chat, chat, chat. Okay. And let me just post that URL in here and then take a look at the set chat really quick. I, I did want to say that I, I really dig the um that wine cork key. I'm <laughs> gonna I'm gonna have to make one. Um so uh I'm a scout leader and you know I'm a radio merit badge counselor and I like I I'm trying to get my my guys to 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 do radio stuff. And oddly enough, um they really dig uh Morse code. Um and one of the things that has always been a challenge is I, I have one of the, the venture BY, you know, the standard venture that everyone has. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's no way I would carry that on a backpacking trip. Um, because that's just madness. Um, <laughs> but, uh, something like that wine bottle cork or, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do a straight key. I, I, I don't have the coordination to do that, but, um, that wine cork one looks really cool. And I'm like, I'm going to have to make that. So thank you for introducing me to that idea. Yeah, you're welcome. Also, um, feel free to reach out to me. W6RWS uh, and I worked with his, um, not 4-H, but the other one um, group. Um, future Farmers? Uh, yes, Future Farmers. And he got a whole bunch of these little kits that the kids soldered up. Um, we went through it step by step. They soldered it up. It was basically a tone generator with a like a straight key on it. So he wrapped a little presentation around electronics building. Um, the kids learned how to solder just a few little pieces. And um, then we talked about radio, of course, and how how it's used with radio and what this whole Morse code thing is and how people communicate with it even today. So that's another real opportunity um, that and the kids had a great time and drove their parents crazy, I'm sure, with the beeping. But, you know, yeah, yeah, he sent them all home with these things and actually got that funded from the ham organization that is selling off um, chunks of their um, IP. Oh, ARDC. Yes, ARDC. They, they actually gave him a grant um, to continue doing this and some other stuff he has planned. So something to look into. They're pretty cheap. Um, just connect up with me and I'll get you the, I'll get you the details on that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. If you're going to bring water, bring electro electrolytes to dissolve it. Um, yeah, you don't have to, I mean, during a day hike, you're not going to get totally wiped out, but water is absolutely the most critical thing. Um, especially, and I hate saying this, uh, I'm a little bit old now. If, if you get dehydrated, um, and it's going to throw off your electrolytes, but even worse, if, if you really get dehydrated, you can get to a point where your heart isn't sparking. You know, you're missing some spark in there and you can you can basically infarct on the trail, very unfortunately. Um, 
So I'm just looking at these. So in in my opinion, hiking a mountain is way more dangerous than crossing a street. You can you can fall, et cetera. You know, absolutely. And it's all about the risk that you are willing to take on. Um, I mentioned in in um, hamninja.com slash safety, how I address all the various um, risk factors that are involved in hiking by yourself and even with other people. Um, you know, just having first aid, telling people where you're going, you, you're, you're checking off some big ones right there. Having extra water, those are the top three things um, that really mitigate a lot of the risk. Now, hopefully they never have to call Adam, uh, K6ARK, who is in uh, Mountain Search and Rescue. But um, if if you don't tell anybody where you're going, they they just won't know where to find you. Um, if Adam has to come find me, it's generally probably because I got lost. But <laughs> um, you there is training. There is um, a wilderness training that you can get on just some basic first aid. And first aid bags, by the way, don't have to be super complicated. If you're out for a day hike, really the only thing you need to carry is some band-aids, maybe something bigger to stop the bleeding. Um, certainly that's that's the case for me. Um, you aren't you probably aren't gonna need to splint your leg and a whole bunch of other complicated stuff, but just the basics is good. And then of course, the more you know, the better. Um and you know, if you know how to stop the bleeding, you're you're ninety percent of the way there. Um, and there are several ways to stop the bleeding beyond just putting a bandaid on. So um, I see a, I see a comment in there from Keith that REI offers wilderness first aid classes. Uh, I was also going to add that the uh, CERT organization offers, if you join CERT, which is sponsored by the fire department and put on by FEMA, uh, you not only get first aid training but you also get a bunch of useful information for keeping yourself your family and your immediate community safe in uh, times of natural disaster or other kind of disaster when emergency services might not be be available um i also saw recently uh the 511 store the clothing and um such uh retailer there's one in carlsbad uh they're offering a build your first aid kit class as well i think it's in conjunction with like uh ccw insurance presentation not quite clear on that but yeah there's all sorts of how to first aid um out there yeah yeah so and i you know i talk about all the basics here i've had search and, um a couple of people from search and rescue run through this and give me feedback so um, yeah, I've had others look at it. This is just kind of a, a discussion of the things that I do and the things that I carry um, around basically improving the odds that I'll come back. Hiking with a buddy, you know, um, certainly is another risk mitigator as well. Um, and knowing where the closest hospital is um, can be handy. <laughs> so I've, I've only had to do that once. All righty. I hope I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you're interested in doing soda or you know somebody that is, feel free to reach out to me. We'll go out and do a summit together. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I've done that for some other folks around the San Diego area, and and uh, yeah, we show and tell and all that good stuff. I've built in. There's a guy that came up in L.A. A younger guy up in L.A. I drove down here and I built him an antenna. Or we actually worked on it together, a little link dipole. So. It's, it's another good way for um, hams to learn just more about, you know, how to build a, a station. I took some barbed wire and built a 20 meter dipole. I was a little cut up after it, but it worked. <laughs> more reason for the band-aids. Yeah, there were quite a few band-aids needed on that one. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Did you see James's question? I don't know if you answered that one already. I did not. Can you read it to me? Because I'm not sure which one it is. 
What oh, is the highest summit you can almost drive to in Southern California? Geez, I don't know. That's a good question. You know, Table Mountain is a soda summit. A lot of you guys are familiar with Table Mountain up uh, just northeast of L.A. You can basically pull in the parking lot. You walk up the road to get in the AZ. Um, it's just a general little gentle little walk set up your gear right there. I've done that one. Um, I'm trying to what, think of what's an A Z. Oh, activation zone. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, an activation zone is as long as it's 80 feet within 80 feet of the highest point of the summit. Um, if you have a little app called Soda Goat on your phone, it'll actually tell you when you're in the A Z. My my dog's tail actually starts twitching kind of weird when we're in the A Z, so that works too. So is your dog available if we want to take your dog to a summit? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> call me. I'll uh, I'll come with you. Yeah, she she loves doing soda. Let me tell you, it's right all over the place. Well, I want to thank you very much for the invite. I always love talking about summits on the air and um, helping other hands because so many people have helped me. You know, kind of get going. I'm still pretty clueless, but yeah, if I can help someone else, that'd be great. Thank you, Chris. It was a great presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, thank you. Nice to see you again. Yeah. Glenn, get that, get get my membership stuff over to me for crying out no, loud. I will. I will. <laughs> so actually, um, Chris, when when you were talking about when you last presented, it was in uh, around October of 2019 was was when you did. And I noticed your membership uh started in 2018, your first uh uh, mention of your call sign in my email is, is in 2018 so oh, very cool you know um this is the only club that i'm a member of in san diego and um actually glenn i know glenn from a long time ago at gila packard uh, both of us worked there no right. was it no yeah. ncr sorry no it was it, it was hp 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 yeah, yeah. my team lives in it yeah and if i remember right um Keith and I were down at Balboa Park doing an outreach program. We were, I think we were in the back of the, the Model Railroad Museum when you and your wife walked by and you went, Glenn, is that you? <laughs> and I think that was the trigger to, to get you, that you went back and started studying uh, for your license. Yeah, um, I did. I think you had a little um, ground plane antenna that you made out of coat hangers, I believe. Yeah, we had, we had all sorts of fun stuff there. I remember that. That <laughs> yeah. was a maker fair. Yeah, it was a maker yes, fair. It was yeah. A maker yeah, fair. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good place to snag new hams. All right. Well, thank you again, Chris. And uh, another you know, repeat of my announcement uh, earlier about the uh, picnic on September 16th. So uh, pencil that date into your calendars. Uh, we'll get the next scope. Uh, fixed. Oh, and if anybody noticed the swag link on the scope is broken, it says site suspended. Um, I'm trying to get our vendor to to fix it. They actually moved to a new system and completely changed the URL. We can't fix emails that have already gone out. Uh, so the new URL will be fixed to buy uh, t-shirts and, and hats and um, polos and such in the next edition of the scope so um look for that update and if there's nothing further speaking of swag and prizes i picked up all of the goodies you're kind of mute muffled mark testing one two it, it sounds like you're on the end of a tin can all right some other time I think what you were going to say is you picked up all of the um, the gift items, uh, the door prize items for the picnic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mark always does a fantastic job of picking out stuff that everybody loves. So make sure you come to the picnic for chances to to get um, neat stuff. Yeah. All right. Lots. Can you hear me? Barely. Lots of things that you didn't know you needed. <laughs> yes. 
I got a garage full of that. Thank yeah, you. my wife reminds me every day. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> what? All right. Thank you again, everybody. Have a great night, and we'll see you next month. Oh, you didn't see my question. Oh, sorry. Uh, question. Can we offer things for sale? Oh, uh, here? Yeah. Anybody want a hot spot? Uh, <laughs> Bridgecom Skybridge? Yeah. What, uh, what do you want for it? Uh, they go for four fifty. I'll I'll take the first three hundred. <laughs> okay. Bring it to the next meeting for the goodie table. I was going to bring it tonight. <laughs> well, okay. it will need float if you use tonight. Hopefully, it'll be fixed by next month. Yeah. So if anybody wants it, let me know. All right. 